What's going on YouTube? Back with another review. Today we got uh, the Elite Force or KWC 1911A1 gas blowback pistol. Uh, now if you're wondering what this gun is, it is a KWC 1911 and it's basically the same exact thing as the Elite Force version because KWC originally manufactures uh, their 1911s for Elite Force. Elite Force just dubs them differently. There are a few minor changes, some have to do with the magazine, some have to do with the gun, but we will cover all of those in this review. So with that, let's get right into it. Alright, so to start things off, let's talk about the magazines for the two guns. Now the magazine on the left here is the original magazine that came with the gun. It is the KWC dubbed magazine. And then the magazine on the right is an actual Elite Force 1911 magazine. Now they both uh, fit in the gun perfectly. Just show you right here. And they both work in the gun. You can both you can use them both in the gun. Uh, but there are uh, two minor differences in the magazines. They're both used by uh, or they're both propelled by 12 gram CO2 cartridges. You can see in this one it's inside. The other one it's not. Um, but there are two differences. The first difference is in these springs. As you can see in the Elite Force one, it's a little bit wider at the bottom, and this allows uh, for you to pull this uh, follower all the way down and then load the BBs from the bottom because it gets wider. On the uh, KWC one, it's not there, so you can only load them from the top. Now, one thing I have found with the Elite Force magazines is sometimes I've had the follower. Uh, jam where the, it gets starts to get wider. Um, I mean, I loaded up a magazine and then the rounds were coming up, and I found that the follower is jammed. So, kind of a con there. I prefer the original KWC magazine. Now, the other difference in these magazines is the regulators uh, inside to make them shoot under 350 FPS are tuned a little bit differently. Uh, the original KWC one uh, with a 0 .2, 0 .25, it shoots like uh, 300 FPS. With the Elite Force 1, it shoots a little bit hotter at 320, 330. Uh, it's just a minor difference you should be aware of. But other than that, they hold uh, around 15 rounds. They're sort of double stacked, they're zigzag patterned. Uh, but overall, they're pretty good magazines. Gas efficiency, uh, you can get around 3 to 4 mags with one CO2 uh, capsule. So, pretty decent. They are a little bit expensive, but that happens. Alright, so now let's talk about the gun a little bit. First thing I'll show you is I'll. Uh, get a close-up on these trademarks on the uh, slide. They are uh, cult replica trademarks licensed by Cybergun. They add a really good look to the gun. I bought this gun secondhand from an owner and as you can see it's sort of banged up everywhere uh, but the trademarks are still very intact. Uh, but let's go over everything uh, just front to back quick because it's a pistol. Uh, it's got these threads in the front so you can attach uh, sort of like a WE style thread in there and have a mock suppressor on there standard uh, non-adjustable front sight. It is a little loose, but nothing there. These marks on the side of the slide are from a serpa I use. It just bangs up against there and it tends to mark it a little bit worse. Moving back, you have serrations on the back each side of the slide so you can rack it easier. Just like that. You have the slide stop right here, which will activate when there's uh, no more ammo in the uh, magazine release it by pushing down. You have your magazine release, trigger, your safety back here. Now it doesn't act like the uh, real 1911 where it can only be activated when the gun is on, when the gun's been, hammer's been pulled back. It can still activate and it won't work. The back sight, non-adjustable, standard there. If we flip it over we have a uh, cyber gun warning See if we can focus in on this. It just says warning, not a toy, caliber 6mm. Then we have a small uh, KWC logo, M1911A1. And then we have a serial number in the back. I don't know if it's unique or not. Beaver tail safety, it has these faux plastic grips. And then it also has a lanyard on the bottom. So overall it's just your basic uh, 1911A1 model. Now the breakdown procedure for this gun is pretty simple and it's uh, like any standard 1911. First thing you'll want to do is you'll want to take your magazine out, release your mag, you want to make sure the gun is clear, look in the chamber, see there's no rounds in there. Uh, after that you'll want to make sure the uh, slide is uh, racked or cocked, and then you'll want to remove the slide stop. 
like in any 1911. You just have to line up the two notches and it should pop out like so. From there you can release your slide and it should come right up. So here we'll look at the uh, lower frame of the gun. Your safety, your hammer, etc. The sears. This gun's been used a lot and there's not anywhere really so it's pretty reliable in essence. Here's the uh, slide. So you can see there is the uh, hop up adjustment right here. Uh, backwards for more hop up and then uh, for less hop up or back to normal this way. My hop up's actually on but we'll break it down from here. I'm gonna remove the spring guide and spring. Cap. And then from here we can uh, untwist, pull this piece out, and then from here we can remove the inner barrel and outer barrel. Now a cool thing is uh, the outer barrel actually has this spring on it, so instead of just having one spring to recoil the slide, it actually has two, kind of a neat feature in my opinion. But you can see the inner barrel here, I'll show you the hop up since it's on. You can see it's got kind of like a two fin method instead of just one. And the hop up's pretty effective on this gun, I did find. Remember, I did buy this second, uh, second hand owned, and it still works pretty well, so I'm relatively happy with this purchase. And there you can see the hop up is off. Now, these parts are really only going to be compatible with KWC parts. Um, they're a lot different than, like, say, a WE or a Marui. I've looked them over, I've owned a WeTech. Uh, 1911 too, the magazines are different, internal parts are different, so you're going to want to have to buy KWC parts. It's not compatible with, you know, your traditional WE. Um, but overall, I would say this is a lot better than, you know, a WE tech. It's just more reliable, more sturdy, and it's got nice cold trademarks. But yeah, it breaks down pretty easy, like you're seeing. It goes back together works pretty well. So in conclusion, uh, the KWC 1911, uh, you can pick up one of the Elite Force models for under $100, you know, on your major retailers. Um, I'm not sure, but the KWC branded version will probably be a little bit harder to find, but you can pick up the Elite Force models pretty easily there, around everywhere, and for, you know, under $100, it's pretty affordable. Uh, it's got a great build quality, a great internal and external quality. Um, this thing just works. I really haven't experienced any jams with it or any hiccups in the gas mechanism as long as you keep the uh, magazines lubed and the gun lubed properly. It works very well and it performs pretty great too. Another thing I like about this gun is that it uses CO2 and where we play at in Iowa we usually get a lot of cold seasons. So having a gun that's CO2 I know I can pull from my sidearm uh, and it'll be reliable. I know when I pull the trigger it'll work, not with some green gas because uh, sometimes green gas doesn't work too well in the cold. But overall, it works really good. The regulators in the magazines are a great feature, so it shoots under 350 FPS, so it's, you know, it can be used as a legal sidearm. But yeah, overall, I mean, for under $100, it's a steal. It's a great pistol to buy, and Elite Force is a great company, so you know your money's going towards a good cause. Alright, so that's been the review of the Elite Force, or the KWC 1911 A1. Um, Check back to our channel for more reviews. We got a lot of cool things coming up for 2013. Uh, so, thanks for watching. Please subscribe.